Have you ever been really, really hungry? You know, the kind of hunger that gnaws at your stomach, where everything else recedes from view. All you can think about is that next meal that's waiting back at home or stopping at the rest station and getting a quick fix. Hunger is something that we all know. and something that reminds us that our bodies require sustenance regularly. Like three times a day or more if you're grazers. You need something that comes in from outside to keep this life that is in you going. And without that, that hunger takes over. Imagine going without a day, one whole day for food. Now imagine doing that for two or three or more days. Nothing else, nothing else will enter your horizon except getting sustenance, except getting food. I don't know the, 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 what biology says, but I don't think a human being can live for very long without food, less so without water. I think without food, certainly a week, a couple of weeks, you can get by. But the hunger, the hunger. Body needs nutrition, needs life that comes to it from outside, from the material world, from plants or animals. Now, we're not just bodies. There's another dimension to us that is spiritual, invisible, that the language, you know, we call it soul, we call it spirit. And that part too has a hunger. Has a hunger. It has a need for life to sustain it. And it's not something that it produces by itself. The body cannot keep itself going. Even plants that don't digest food the way animals do, plants require sunlight coming from outside, and then there's photosynthesis, unless they're the Venus flytrap kind, you know? Our bodies need something, and our spirits especially do. The problem is this. With bodily hunger, no one has to tell us about bodily hunger. As soon as our body feels that there's not enough nutrition, you will start feeling hunger. You don't have to tell a newborn child, honey, wake me up in the middle of the night when you're hungry, okay? No, you will get woken up. That's not something that needs to be taught. The body knows it by instinct, by instinct. But the spirit, the spirit. We can have a spiritual hunger and we can go for days and weeks and years without truly paying attention to it. We manage to distract ourselves in so many different ways to numb, to push aside, to overlook that spiritual hunger. The hunger for the invisible part of our self. Human beings, men and women, this mysterious unity of that which is material, corporal, and that which is invisible, spiritual. And we can try feeding that spiritual hunger with all kinds of things. Distractions, certainly. Our little phones with those glowing screens have a world of distractions out there. You've been to a red light where someone in front of you is clearly checking Facebook and light goes green, they're still not moving. Happens to me a lot. I won't say if I'm behind, I'm the one in the car doing it. <laughs> Distractions of all kinds. We try to fill it up with, with pleasure, with power, with honor, with respect, with wealth. All of those things to fill this spiritual hunger that no ordinary human food can satisfy. Now, so, child or even a grown human being where instead of eating food we're starting to go and look for dirt to eat we'd say well there's something wrong with you there's something wrong with your appetite you don't feed yourself dirt dirt does not actually give you the sustenance that you need and if someone says they're not hungry okay one meal you can understand but if they do that for a day or more, we get concerned. We'll take that person to the doctor. Something's wrong with you. You're not eating. When it comes to our spirits, we're okay with feeding dirt and then ignoring our spiritual hunger for days and days and days. 
It's because we are actually ill. We're sick. We have a spiritual sickness that numbs and deadens the hunger that we have of the Spirit. That sickness, of course, is sin. And that's why we need a Savior. That's why we need someone to remind us, to teach us that there is genuine spiritual hunger and that there is a genuine way in which it is actually able to be fulfilled. Today the Lord reminds us that we are not made just for things of the earth. And that spiritual hunger is actually designed to be fulfilled, has been created to be fulfilled. What is it in the things of the Spirit that truly, truly awaken us to this desire, this spiritual hunger? We call it different things. We call it the pursuit of happiness. We call it the search for meaning, for significance, for trying to make sense of this thing that is called human existence. That's our spiritual hunger. And it is awakened, we realize it most especially when we encounter our desire to know and be known and to love and be loved. Those are the things of the Spirit. Everyone, everyone, regardless of where they're from, what they've lived, where, what language they speak, what culture they belong to, where they grew up, has the desire to know, to be known, to love and be loved. And it is when we encounter at a human level next to us another person who looks on us with love, who looks on us with love. We encounter a face that looks on us with that gaze of love. That, that spirit is actually awakened. We suddenly become alive to this dimension of the human being. I mean, think of a child and the gaze of the mother, the father on the child. It is not just, however, for another person that our spirit is made. As we all know, if we've lived, there is nothing in this world that truly can fill this hunger. Nothing in this world. Not things, so hopefully we're mature enough to realize that no thing will do it, and pleasure alone will not. Just this week I was talking to someone about their conversion, their journey. They were talking about Friday nights in Athens, in college, um, and staying up late and drinking late and all the stuff that goes on with that and coming back and lying there in bed and saying like, what is going on? Why am I not happy? This is what everyone says you're supposed to do in order to be happy. We know none of those things, but even the things that higher things maybe, our families, our spouses, even they are incapable of filling this hunger, this hunger that's in us. Because the human spirit is made open to the infinite is made open to the infinite. And only God who is infinite can fulfill that hunger. The claim of the church is that God has indeed fulfilled that, wants to fulfill that, wants to give Himself. He became man. He became one of us. Comes to us in our circumstances, in our human ambit, in our environment. Through the face of the other, through many different ways, through many different ways. Hopefully the church, the body of Christ, is that place where people encounter that humanity of Jesus. A different way of being human, living and loving someone that has been awakened to the face of the Father who loves them. And of course, of course He comes to us in the bread of life, in this this, this amazing condescension of God that He would become as tiny as a little piece of bread. I mean, it doesn't even look like bread. And through that, coming into our bodies to feed our soul. The thing about the dynamic of spiritual hunger is that the Spirit ultimately does not just want to receive, but wants to give wants to give. Anyone who has lived, who realizes the dynamic of love, love does not simply want to absorb the lover. That remains immature and incomplete. 
What love wants to do is to give of oneself to the beloved. When we awaken to that dimension, when we realize that we are made not just to receive, but to give, then our hunger for God, our hunger for the things of the Spirit, meets that divine hunger that comes down in search for us. And so that when we come up in this line to receive Holy Communion, to receive the bread of life, it is the, the intersection of these two hungers. The finite, the human person made for God, seeking the things of the Spirit. And God Himself, who becomes man, who becomes little, coming to satiate us and to lead us on the way. We are all like the prophet Elijah on the way to the mountain of God, Horeb, where he went 40 days and 40 nights, and the angel with that miraculous hearth cake and jug feeds him. The bread of life accompanies us and feeds us on this journey to the mountain of God, to the vision of God in heaven. This is not the end of the journey, and the, all the confusion in life happens because we mistake, we mistake the journey the vessel for the destination. We are all moving towards God. We're all being drawn by Him. The Lord says, unless the Father draws Him, no one comes to them. No one comes to Him. And the one who has been from God, who has seen the Father, has come down to reveal Himself to us, to show us how is it that this hunger that we have can be indeed filled. Let us ask the Lord this Mass for the grace to truly feel that hunger. To not let the lesser hungers of the body drown out the hunger of the soul, of the spirit. And to come and receive Him, the bread of life, aware of our need for Him. Aware indeed of the great thirst and hunger the Lord has of giving Himself to Him. The bread of life, He who has a name and a face that loves us beyond what we can imagine. Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Son of God.